what is love? It isn't a noun. Love is not a thing. You don't possess love. You don't keep love in a jar on your shelf so when people come over, you can pull it down and say, look, this is my love. Isn't it pretty? No, love is a verb. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that uh, you are a good God who loves us and uh, gives us the opportunity to, to learn your word and talk about your word and gather together and understand it as a community, Lord. Thank you for that. And we just ask you that you be with us today as, as I speak, that if there's something I, I prepared that you don't want me to say, make me forget it and go over it. And if there's something that you want me to say, um, um, fill, fill me with your words and let them come out. Lord, we love you and we say these things in your holy name. Amen. All right, so we are still in this awesome, awesome series called Love is a Verb. And this message was new to me. Um, this type of message, because normally when I get to preach, Shane's like, I'll just preach on whatever. We'll take a break from the series. And he's like, no, we're sticking with the series. So you're kind of bound to doing this. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. So this is the first time that I got assigned a section of scripture that I get to preach from. Um, it's, it was great learning experience for me. I learned a lot doing this and a lot of things. Um, it was exciting for me. So, but let's get in. We're going to talk today, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 through 6. It says, My little child, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not only ours, but for the the sins of the entire world. And by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this, we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So that's what we're going to talk about today, but before we really jump into it, I am not an English major, so there was a few words in here that I'm like, hold up, what's up with this? And, and the first one was Jesus is our advocate, kind of a big word, you guys may know what advocate means, but an advocate is a person who comes to our aid, um, somebody who pleads our case to a judge, um, an advocate also offers support, strength, and counsel but, but a huge thing is sometimes they intercede for us when it's necessary. The Bible says that Jesus is the advocate for anyone who puts their trust in him. So if we want to have Jesus out of our advocate, we put our trust in him, and, and he can show up in our lives in two ways. Jesus is an, or God is an advocate in our lives in two ways. The first way is Jesus in heaven. Right? Jesus is our advocate in heaven, and he speaks on our behalf, and he intercedes between God and us for us. In Romans 8.34, it says, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and also interceding for us. And that's the version in the NIV Bible. But I really loved the version in the NLT version because that last sentence, it says, instead of interceding for us, he is pleading for us. So God is, is there getting pleaded for us from Jesus. He's pleading our case to, Jesus, to, wow, to God so that when God looks at us, all he sees is Jesus. He doesn't see us. He doesn't see what we have done. He doesn't see where we're going in life. He doesn't see anything but Jesus. And that happens when we put our trust and our faith in Jesus and, <clears throat> and, and we lean towards Jesus and we keep our eyes focused on him. He then becomes the intercession for us. And the second way that God can show up and be our advocate is in the Holy Spirit in, in us. John 14 says, John 14, verse 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have ever said. So this is a promise from God that says when we put our trust and faith in Jesus, we will receive the Holy Spirit and it will be 
in us and live with us and show us the path. It will keep our eyes guided towards Jesus and God and, and will teach us the things that God has said. So the second big word, and I practice this one a lot, it's propitiation. That's a tough one. You can also say atoning sacrifice, right? I'm not, like I said, I'm not an English major, so words are difficult for me sometimes. But the word propitiation carries the basic idea of appeasement or satisfaction. Um, and it's specifically talking about satisfaction towards God and appeasement towards God. So if Jesus is our atoning sacrifice or propitiation, he has satisfied the need that God has. He has appeased the need that God has for us. When you look at Jesus, that need is fulfilled. <clears throat> he filled it because he died on the cross, shed his blood, and was raised on the third day. And, and he was able to be that, those things, because he did. He lived a life that was perfect. He lived a life that was good enough to be that payment, to be a qualifying payment to appease God's need. And, and just like Shane talked about last week, Jesus hit that bullseye perfectly. We can't hit that bullseye perfectly. We're way off in right field or left field. Some, some are down here in south field. It doesn't matter where we end up, the darts we throw, because Jesus was that perfect bullseye. Jesus was the perfect bullseye because we couldn't be. And he hit the mark, and that's why he was able to be these things. And if we, we go to the next verse, verse 3, it says, And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. All right, so if we believe that Jesus is our advocate, and we believe that Jesus was good enough and lived a life according to God's will and is our atoning sacrifice or propitiation, then what are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to keep his commandments. It's simple, I know hard also. But if you break down verse 3, um, he uses the word know, right? If we know God, then we keep his commandments. Well, Jesus, or John, sorry, John was writing to a bunch of people who were all about knowledge, right? Shane talked about the Gnostics, and they were, they were knowledge seekers, and they thought they were saved because they knew everything. Well, he's like, well, hey, you guys say you know Jesus, right? They're like, yes, we know Jesus, well, then live by his commandments. John uses the word or a variable of no 44 times in 1 John. I didn't know that until I was studying. Something new that I learned. And I think that's super awesome because I think he knew his audience. He spoke to them in terms that they would understand, in terms that they would relate to. Hey, guys, you're all about knowledge, right? And if you know this, then do this. John's not saying that if we know God, we have to be perfect and we have to do everything right. He's saying if you know God, follow his commandments and, and, and go in a direction that is towards God because it's impossible for us never to sin. We're gonna. We're gonna fall short. We're gonna miss that mark. We're not ever gonna hit that perfect bullseye. <clears throat> but then we move a little bit further into verse four through six. We're gonna lump these ones together. Uh, because I think it goes a little, it, it changes a little bit from talking about who God is and, and what we know and what we should do, right? Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him, but whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Okay, the next word I want to kind of define is abide. Abide means act, sorry, accept or act in accordance with. So if we're law-abiding citizens, we follow the law. We follow the law <coughs> of the area we live in. We follow the law of the country we live in. Whether we like them or not, we follow them. And we accept them as what we need to do. But when we're walking and abiding in God, we are walking and abiding. We are following God's laws. We are walking and we, we accept that those are 
the correct way to live. And if we aren't living that way, we're lying to ourselves. So Matthew 22, we get one big calling here, one of the most important callings that we should ever pay attention to. God calls us to do it and do it big. And he says, love God and love your neighbor. Right? So love God and love others. That is the big calling. That is what we could do if we want to walk in step with Jesus is to love God and love others. Our lives are called to be about love. They're called to build others up, raise people up, and point them to God. Um, one of my favorite songs, one of my favorite Christian songs, is, is by a band called King and Country. Good band, right? Yeah? If, if you don't know who they are, you need to look them up because they are awesome. But they, they wrote this song called Proof of Your Love. And, and in the middle of the song, um, this, is, this is one of the lines. It says, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give all I own to the poor or even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what we say, no matter what we believe, and no matter what we do, we're bankrupt without love. I think that's pretty important because, because if God is love and Jesus is love and that's what he calls us to do, if we're not loving, we are lying to ourselves. We are telling ourselves we're doing something, yet we're doing the opposite. And because of how we love the neighbor, that, that yards never mowed when yours is great and amazing, how you treat that person is proof of your love of God. How, how you treat the officer when you get pulled over for going seven over is your proof of knowing God. How you treat your kids when you walk in the door and you stumble over their shoes for the fifth time this week is your proof of knowing God. Because if we're a Christian, if you call yourself somebody who follows Christ, you're a little Christ, we are called to love. We are called to use our life to project love and light. And when we don't do that, we're lying. That's a hard truth, but it's true. When we're not loving, we are not abiding in God's light. In first five, verse 5, I think this is one of my favorite parts of this verse. It uses the phrase, perfecting his love. When we know him, we are to perfect his love in us. Well, how do we get perfect at things? Or how do we even get decent at things? We practice, right? Some people, even in sports, yeah, you're just naturally gifted, and you may be good. Some people can pick up a guitar and just be like, oh, this is easy for me. And I'm like, no, it's not. I pick up a fishing rod, and I'm good because I practice a lot. <clears throat> but something new that I'm doing, that I'm practicing is, is I, I get the opportunity to be an assistant football coach for the Wasatch Mighty Might Team White. I don't know if you guys understand that, but that's just a whole bunch of, of 11 and 12-year-olds that play tackle football. And we go to Wasatch. Greatest, greatest county, right? But anyways... So some of these football players, there's 17 of them, I think this last Saturday, um, we asked, hey, who, who was this their very first football game they ever played in? And like six of them raised their hand. So 11, that means 11 have played and 11 have practiced more. But each and every single one of them showed up on game day, did their job, tried hard, and it's because we practiced, right? Right? It's because during practice, we slowed down and we stopped. When things were easy, when people weren't running at you at full speed and trying to hit you, we slowed down. We said, okay, when we do this, what is your first step? Just start there. I don't want to know your fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth step. What's your first step? What's your first motion? And that's what we practiced all week long is those first few steps. And we did it slow and we did it over and over and over because when it comes to game day, when it comes to full speed, people are running at you, life is hard, the game is hard, you're tired, you're exhausted, it's hot, you're sweaty. It, it rained on them, so they were wet and a little bit cold and the ball was slick. 
But they were successful because they practiced every single step slow when things were easy. And we can use these in our life as well, right? Because when we, when we practice our hobbies, we get better at them, right? When we pa- practice public speaking, we get better, right? How about when we practice keeping a normal schedule? That was a tough one for me, right? But we get better. When we practice it when life is easy, it's, it's a lot easier to do it when it's hard. How about this one? Who here practices merging into traffic? Because I know a lot of people need practice. And, and one other thing, how about this? I think Utah needs to practice this as well. Not driving in the left lane, because that is for passing, guys. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> but, but Galatians 5, 16 through 17 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the flesh, flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh, they are in conflict with each other so that, you, so that you are not to do whatever you want. There's a lot of things we want to do in life. There's a lot of things I want to say to people when they do dumb things. But I don't because we've practiced how we talk to people. Because we practice how we react when people cut us off in traffic. How about this? How do you show love or how do you abide in the light and walk with Jesus when you disagree with your wife? How about when it comes to your kids and they're home late, supposed to be home two hours ago and you've not got phone call at all and you're like, where are they? And then they come walking in the door. How do you, how do you show God's love then? How do you show God's love when you give your kid a car and you say, hey, you can drive this all you want, but check the transmission fluid and then three months later they're like, Hey, it's not going into gear. I'm like, did you check the transmission fluid? And they're like, no. How do you show love then? For you kids that are in school, who here has ever worked really hard on a project and still not done good and gotten a good grade? Well, that was me. How do you, how do you act according to God's will then? But let's get a little bit more serious. How do we show love when we're depressed? Or how do we show love when somebody that we love so much on this world passes away? Or how about when you find out your your spouse cheated on you? Or you're addicted to something? How do we show love then? Because those moments there, those are like the game day scenarios. Because all these other things, when you get cut off in traffic, when your kids leave something out, that's practice. That's practice for the real stuff. Because when life hits us hard, it's not as easy to think. It's not as easy to stay focused. It's hard. Get emotions involved. But the big question is, how do we show love for God when life hits us hard? And I think if we want to just simply put it, we can, we can move into Galatians 5, 22 through 26. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus has crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit, not let us become conceited, provoking, or envying each other. I know I'm just saying, hey, when all these things are hard, do this. It's simple, but it's not. What I'm telling you is these are the things that we need to practice when life is easy, when life is slow, when things are quiet, and you've got somebody standing by your side being like, hey, hey, no, no, try this, you know? Hey, 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 no, don't turn right, turn left. So when life is easy and life is simple, I encourage you guys to practice these things. I encourage you guys To choose love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because when when those hard things hit us, it's hard. It's hard to keep our brain focused on these things, and it's hard to keep in step with Jesus when we know the world's crashing in on us. 
Shane had an awesome series a couple months ago about the fruits of the Spirit. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it because he breaks each and every one of these down is how do we show love here? Where can we find joy? How can we be more peaceful? And he goes into the forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I encourage you guys to practice those things. Practice those things when life's easy and you've got people by your side because some days there's not going to be people by your side. Some days you're going to be in the middle in the thick of something that is serious and hard and if we haven't practiced it, we're not going to act it out, are we? So I'm going to pray for closing and then I'm going to give you guys some take-home questions. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that you are a good God, that you give us these things that we should practice in our daily lives when, when life is slow and quiet and easy because life's not always that way, Lord. Life gets crazy. It's hectic. We live in a fallen world. Bad things happen. So we ask you to be with us as, as we want to walk in the light with you when we want to abide in your love and your light. We just ask you to be with us so that, that on the days that are hard, on the days that are wild and crazy, that we choose love and we choose these fruits of the Spirit that you have given us and you have taught us and you have shown us. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for who you are and the, and the message that you've given us. And we say these things in your holy name. Amen. All right. On the bottom of your guys' announcement sheet, there's three questions. It's, does having an advocate and propitiation to God change how we live? I want you guys to think, knowing that God is our advocate and God is the atoning sacrifice for us, how should we live? And then what does each day look like when we're abiding in him? How does the Monday mornings when the coffee machine's broke and you're late to work, how can we abide in him? And then what is one step you can take to move out of the darkness and into a relationship this week, into the relationship of light and love and abiding in Jesus? I want you to talk in your small groups when you go home about this one because that one's going to be deep and that one's going to be hard. Because where in our world, where in our life do we need to step out of darkness and step out of that lie, out of the, the unlove and bring it into love and into a relationship with God this week? Thank you guys so much for being here.